timing a Maytag Model 92 multimotor without a jig or uh, apparatus, a fixture of any sort. We're going to time this engine. That's why I started this series of how to time a Maytag Model 92 multimotor without a jig, any kind of special wrench or anything like that. That's what started this whole series here. We're going to, it's only going to be about, I'm thinking maybe three, no more than three more episodes. And we're going to go ahead and time it. We're done. But the, you may be thinking that, well, what's he making such a big deal out of this other stuff for? And the reason is, is that if you're having a problem with your Maytag ignition system, it's probably not your timing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, it's just probably not your timing that's at fault. 99 times out of 100, it will be just plain dirt, dirty. Contacts that don't make contact, uh, corrosion and such as that. Nine times out of 10, something just simple. But it's that other time in there when you've got a bad coil. If you've got a bad coil, there's no, there is a fix for it. But the simplest way is replace the coal and don't be fooling around with it and you see uh, uh, at most uh, this this right here it's it, this is basic and that's the point of the whole series is how basic this ignition system is it's wonderful you can see I cut the gasket and I'm gonna put just a little I'm gonna put a little all around yonder like that right there and a little bit right there in them threads and a little bit right there and a little bit just a very little bit of oil. I'm gonna put it right yonder. Yeah, you, you can't put this on there wrong. One of the things that I would advise when you're taking an engine apart is to keep these parts right here, a, a remnant of a gasket. Put the micrometer on there. I mean, get it out. Get the micrometer out. Put it in your hand and verify for yourself what the thickness of the gasket is. Uh, this one right here, particular gasket, mocked out at six thousandths. That's not very much, but it does need to be in there. You do need a gasket in this flywheel. There is a reason for one to be in there. You can't put this thing on there wrong. It'll only fit one way. You line up them bolt holes like that right there. When all three of them lines up, you got her. The, uh, the, the governor is what we're going to install now, and we'll be done with this flywheel. So I just put that bolt right there in there. Some of these right here won't have the threads all the way down there. It'll be skinnier down here. Both of them are Maytags. That's the way that goes. We did put the roller and a pin there. This is the part right here that secures. That's your RPM where you set the RPMs with turning this thing and it's got them little it's got them two little bitty things right under that fits in that little cross right there and you can actually adjust this thing down to the accuracy of one quarter of a turn or well, they intended it not to be very much, but it's really important that you know the RPM of your engine. If you're working on an engine and you do not know the RPM of it, well, uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's it's really important what I, the point I'm making. Put a little oil everywhere. Anything that moves, be it a Model 92 or a Model 72, if it moves, put some oil on it. And that's the pivot right there. That's the reason I oil that. Put it right there. You see it? You see how that turns so smooth? And I did clean out that thing right there. And I am using this wrench right here. And it fits right in that groove. Put a little oil right there on them threads. Not much. Just that's enough right there. Just a little bit of oil right there. Everything's oiled up really good. Y'all see that little stainless steel washer right there? You see it? That's really important. The shiniest side of it, the slickest side of it, goes outwards towards the governor arm itself. 
and you do want play, if you hold that tight against that washer, and that right there, you want to, that that needs to have free movement with no restrictions whatsoever. That's the way that works. You should have had to, you should have done run a tap in yonder to uh, clean them threads out. See how easy that turns? You see that? You should have done run a tap up in there and set that right. Shouldn't you? At this point, you should not. Make sure it gets up on that little shoulder yonder. Don't get it in a bind. Get that up out of the way like that. And then take your, your screwdriver. Don't use a screwdriver on this. Use a special reach on that right there. That little thing right there gets right up in yonder. And we're going to put a little bit of pressure on this. Not very much. I'm going to look at it. I want to make sure that that... It, what, the... Uh, I wanted to make sure that that, uh, that little washer in there, that what I, I wanted to make sure it was not a, a skew. Make sure that your washer is lined up. That little, oh, you see that move? Oh, that's going to be a good one. Th this is what you want. And when you tighten that up now, oh, it's still free. Can you all see that? This is one of the better ones. Some of them comes out where that will be tight at that point. Okay, I put a little pressure on it. It's really tight. That's very good right there. Now, what happens when you put this washer over here, when you start assembling all of this together, you want to pull those down even. When you're tightening up this, this one right here, when you are tightening, when you're tightening this bolt right here, you want that to, I got my finger on the back of it so I can tell if it turns. And don't don't tighten one of, don't tighten one of them up any more than the other one. Keep them keep them all tightened up about the same so you pull that down at equal. You want you want to pull this down equal amount on all of these bolts at one time. We've got the gasket underneath there. And now, now before I tighten up this one right here, I want to make sure that, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to loosen this back up a little bit. I'm going to show you something. Y'all going to learn something now. I loosened that back up a little bit, and I put this here screwdriver wrench up in there, and I'm going to lay that down where I can get me a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tighten it up a little more. Okay. Now, now that's 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 good and tight, and that's still free, and there's no appreciable amount, no appreciable amount of play crooked like this right here. It, it's pretty decent. That we 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 this is a good one. Uh, and I want to I, I'm I'm just going to use my finger lightly on the back of that bolt. And then I'm going to tighten this up. That way I can tell if it turns. If it does, then I'll put the wrench on it. If it don't, then I'm just I, I, I'm just going to do it this way. And I felt and I felt no pressure on that back bolt, so I'm, that's going to be good. And just tighten, tighten them up. I mean, put it, get them, get them tight, but don't twist them off. Okay. I'm going I'm going to hold that in again. Cause I don't want this in the move, but I do want it to be tight. Okay, now it, with the, the flywheel's finished. Now, I, but I am going to go ahead and paint this green on this particular one right here. I'm going to paint the primary part green, and then I'll put a pulley on here. Uh, I do have a pulley, and I have the cover. You, well, you know what we got, and the the one thing remaining, the governor spring. You put that spring hook right there in that little eye on that thing. Put it up in there. Turn that back down again to secure that there so it don't get up out of yonder. I got that on there like that. Put that thing back up there and put that nut on there with them two little teeth pointing downward. Put that up there like that. Uh, take up the slack at least up to the top of it. And you see, we got that. We got that little pivot point in there. There ain't no reason to take that out there if there ain't something wrong with it there, because it is staked into this flywheel on the other side. You put that. You put that spring right up there on that, and then 
you push right down on it like that and it got on yonder. Now they won't get off there because there's a little ring in there. Oh yeah, that's going to be a good one. We got plenty of adjustment and all works. Oh yes. Now that's the way you want your governor to be working, just like that right there. That's a nice one right there. Now, it's the measurement right in yonder where that little foot comes down there and on this here, that's a fixed on all of them position. And this little shoe comes down. Well, that's a, that's a stop for that arm. It comes up there and hits that, and that's as far as it can go. Can't go no more. So often you will find these governors adjusted to where there's no movement at all in here. Even the tension to this spring right here will have a, a smoother rate if that spring is... Is, re, is it, if it's the wrong spring and has too much tension, then the engine has to go more to sling that arm out like that. It has to it has to get more tension there, and then when it does hit the coast part, then it, it, the spring is so tight that it's it's a deflection rate. Look it up. But anyway, we got that on there. We got that on there. This is good to go. We done with this. I will tell you about this adjustment right here.